Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I am excited to be a part of the Team Tiny New Beginnings video hop where members of the Team Tiny Facebook group are sharing creations with the New Beginnings theme, which could be a New Year's card, a wedding card, or a baby card, or anything that falls under that New Beginnings theme. Today I'm sharing this trifold baby card that I made using alcohol inks on glitter paper to create the ombre letters. The pattern paper I'm using is from Doodlebug Designs Bundle of Joy paper pad. Now I've picked out three sheets as you see here, but I actually only end up using two of them. The gingham check and the yellow sheet with stars. The matching cardstock I'm using is So Saffron by Stampin' Up! and I'm also using MFT Stamps Impact Alphabet dies. The little welcome die comes from the well-written die set from Stampin' Up! also. Okay, to start, I'm taking a piece of white glitter paper that I've cut down to six inches by six inches, and I'm taking the Tim Holtz alcohol ink applicator and adding a little bit of the alcohol ink blending solution to the felt pad, and then adding enchanted alcohol pearls so that I can apply it onto my glitter paper. The reason I'm coloring the glitter cardstock is because I didn't have any of that pastel colored glitter paper that matched this, so I um, wanted to create it myself. And I saw this technique on Jennifer McGuire's YouTube channel a while back, and I thought I'd give it a try. So next, I'm applying a new felt applicator and lemonade alcohol ink, and I'll be overlapping this just a little bit on the pink to create like a peachy orange color that's also in that, that paper pad. And then um, after applying the yellow, I'm applying the green color, which is called Envy. And this is also an alcohol pearls ink. So just remember, if you're using alcohol pearls, you wanna make sure that you are shaking it up really good because there's mica powder pigment down in the bottom. And if you don't shake it up really well, it won't look the way it's supposed to. Um, so you wanna hear the ball moving around when you shake it. And so now that I have this done, I'm gonna set it aside and work on the card base. This is a sheet of 110 pound Nina Solar White cardstock that I'm cutting in half to create two A2 side folding cards. I'm scoring them down the middle at four and a quarter inches with my bone folder on my scoring board. I'm using the edge of the board to place the edges of my card on there to make sure that they line up exactly. Now I'll be gluing these together to make it a trifold card, but I needed to trim off an eighth of an inch from one of the edges so that it closes and they line up correctly. I'll have all the measurements for all the different pieces of this card listed in my coordinating blog post. The link will be listed in the description box below. To make this a split card, I'm taking the one that was not trimmed off and I'm cutting out a portion from the middle. I've lined up the score line on my trimmer at one and three quarter inches and then I've cut it off and then I'm taking that bottom piece that was cut off and trimming this down to one and a half inches so that it will leave a one inch gap in between. Now I'm taking the yellow cardstock and cutting the frames for the front of the card. The top part frame is cut to one and five eighths of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch. And the bottom frame is cut to one and three eighths of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch. The pattern paper is then gonna be cut to one and a half inches by five and a quarter inches for the top. And then one and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches for the bottom. Now for the inside of the card, the frame is cut to four and one eighths of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch. And the other sheet of patterned paper with the stars on it is cut to four by five and a quarter. Now I know you can't really see the stars on camera, but they're there. <laughs> um, now back to the glitter paper. I'm taking the welcome die from Stampin' Up! from the well-written die set and then the letters from MFT Stamps and I'm placing them where I want them to hold them in place. I'm using some removable scotch tape so that I can run it through my Big Shot die cutting machine. And because I want the letters to be sturdy, I'm cutting them out on that same heavyweight cardstock two more times so that I have three layers. And I'm gluing the die cuts together using a glue sponge and my favorite spatula tweezers. Now to save time, I've eliminated some of the footage of this process. This glue sponge really comes in handy and it's really best to store it upside down so that the glue is on top when you're ready to use it. Otherwise, you'll be waiting a while. Now I'm assembling the card using some Nouveau Deluxe liquid adhesive. You wanna make sure you put the glue on the back of the piece that was trimmed down so that it'll close properly. 
While I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little bit about Team Tiny. We're a group of crafters that come together on Facebook. We each have YouTube channels with under a thousand subscribers and we come together each month to create video hops to share our passion for crafting and to help each other's channels grow. So when you're done watching this video, make sure you check out the other videos along the hop. You can do this by clicking on the hashtag in the description box, Team Tiny New Beginnings. Now since the letters will be what's connecting the cutoff piece to the top of the card, I want to make sure that the letters line up straight. So to keep the top piece down and to make sure the bottom piece doesn't move, I'm taping both of them down to my glass mat using some removable scotch tape. I'm placing my letters down and then I'm going to be using a T-ruler to make sure that they're straight. Now to attach the letters to the top and bottom cardstock pieces, I'm using several permanent mini glue dots on the top and bottom of each of the letters. Now, of course, I've sped this process way up just to save on time. Now, I've had these Safari animal stickers that I purchased from Hobby Lobby a while back, and I thought they would go perfect on this card. The giraffe is perfect for attaching the top piece to the bottom piece also on the left-hand side of the card for more stability. Now parts of the giraffe are see-through and since there's only two pieces of foam tape on the back, I needed to add a little more. I first added some 3D foam squares, but then I noticed that the thickness was a lot different than the stickers that were already on there. But I found that my Darice foam strips were the same, so I used a few on the back of the legs. And then when I opened the card, I realized that part of the foam sticker was showing through. So I covered it up with a little piece of scrap cardstock that I had to trim down a little bit. So next I use the scraps from the other side of the gingham check pattern paper and I trimmed it down to the same size as my frames on the front side of the card. Now, I don't know if you noticed this or not but the back of the letter A had some ink spots on it and so I didn't want that showing so I took the um, leftover pattern paper the star and I cut out some more letters and then I decided to cover those up. <laughs> I intended on the stars to show and I forgot that I needed to place my dies on the reverse side, but it's okay. As long as it's covering up those ink spots, I'm good. So um, I glued everything down and I really wanted to use the monkey on the inside of the card, but because he's also 3D, I wasn't able to use him on the inner flap. So I decided to use him on the front. I wanted his tail to look like it was hooked onto the welcome die cut. So I figured out the placement over the letter B and then just glued it down. I thought about cutting the acetate part around the monkey's tail so I could actually hook it, but it was sticking up too high from the attached foam circles on the back, so I just stuck it down. Now, I thought that the inner flap was too plain. I actually ordered some of the matching bundle of joy stickers to go with the paper, but they still haven't arrived yet because the mail's been slow. Um, as of the time I recorded this video anyway, so I decided to use some of the spring stickers instead since some of the same icons that are in this sticker pack or in the bundle of joy paper strips. So I just glued down to the back side of the top part and then um, since I had two strips of scraps left that I had cut off earlier, I added them to the top and bottom of the inside of the card and then added two pieces of iridescent pink glitter peel-off strips from Love From Lizzie. Now Love From Lizzie is based over in the UK, but I did catch her Black Friday sale when she offered free shipping worldwide and I bought a bunch of these stickers, so I'm excited to use them in the future. Now for the finishing touches, I added a small strip of those same peel-off strips just below the letters and then three pink bling stickers to the front of the card because you always need bling. All of the supplies that I use to make this card are listed in the description box below. And this finishes up my card for today. I really hope you like it. I thought it turned out pretty adorable. Let me know what you think in the comments and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're not already a subscriber to my channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below and turn on those notifications. To find the other videos in the hop, click on the hashtag in the description box or type the hashtag Team Tiny New Beginnings in the search bar. There are some very talented ladies in the Team Tiny group and I'm excited to see what they've done with this theme. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video today. 
You can find other card inspiration on my Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest pages at Cards by Kendra, as well as my website, cardsbykendra.com. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and you join me again soon.